long does it take you to shower? I, I, I say I'm down to like between half an hour and 45 minutes now. Mm. Me too, but the worst it ever was was 10 hours. How do you have enough hot water for 10 hours? You don't. Hours? It's you a cold, stay? miserable, agonizing shower. <laughs> and we used hydrogen peroxide and alcohol. We, there was one point we were using so much hydrogen peroxide on our faces it turned our eyebrows orange. <laughs> Didn't that hurt? It hurts Hurst a lot. Hot. It is ridiculously Wait. painful. You thought the hurt was clean. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> and it's just something I did. Like, I had no choice. Like, the OCD is saying, do this, do this. Like, okay, okay, I'm doing it. It's like listening to somebody who's holding you at gunpoint. Like, you absolutely have to do what they say. We've tried all the medications. We've been on medication since we were 12. Yeah. It just dampens it, really. It is not nearly as effective as the DBS, and it comes with its own health problems. And it kind of takes away your emotions. W were you just to the point where we got to find something else that's going to work? Or? Well, we knew about deep brain stimulation surgery since we were in our early 20s, but they only did it out of state. They did it at the Mayo Clinic, and by that point we couldn't travel because of our fear of crowds and public bathrooms and... People going through our suitcases <laughs> at the airport. Uh, letting, like, the... When you have OCD, you generally have to rank your anxieties one through ten. Uh, and it was easy to let a lot of the ones go, like, without any therapy. Like, they just didn't matter. Like, we stopped wearing socks in our own home. Like, hey, barefoot. You don't need to be all formal in your own house. Uh, we, we wore capris. Well, I mean, I guess they're, like, anxious people. Capris, they go to here, but we'd never done that before. <laughs> we hadn't worn shorts since we were 13, so... <laughs> You can wear shorts now. T-shirts? We're working on that. Okay. We're, we're we not... Pants to here. That's, <laughs> that's still a pretty big step. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And we gave up using rubbing alcohol on our bodies. Yeah. Um, Which, that was really nice. We, we had a serious rubbing alcohol problem. We could go through five bottles a day. Each. And that was on our skin. Don't recommend it. It feels horrible. It burns. The smell is sickening. It's, it's awful. <laughs> but it smells clean. It, it was just a matter of having to do it. It's not enjoyable. That's what OCD does. It, it forces you to do things that you do not want to do at all. So after you would clean yourself or take a really long shower, did you feel like, okay, now I'm clean, I feel relieved, and, or was it still that wasn't good enough? No, I'd feel exhausted and sick and tired and sad. Yep, and dry. And dry, very dry. Dr. Van Sickle said when you came back, you guys hugged him. And he started to cry because he said you could never really hug anybody before. It, because OCD just makes you feel like afraid to actually touch people. It's just, it feels kind of sick to do. Oh. <laughs> could you touch each other? No. No. Oh. <laughs> so even though you're sisters. We're, we still have human bodies and human bodies are apparently terrifying. Yeah, I don't think we've touched each other since we were children. Huh. Still. Like what? we hug every so often, okay. but. It's not like a regular thing. So trying to actually feel like a useful member of society, someone who could ever have a job, their own home, friends, a uh, social life. Just feeling like a human being in general and not just the sum of being anxious. Curious about your piercings though. That would, that, do you worry about those, you know, cleaning those? Uh, or since they're on you, it's okay? We wash them individually in the shower, we, each one. Yeah. yeah, it's not like just doing the whole face, it's like doing each thing individually. So it takes a little bit more time. Uh, we go through, we always joke that we go through about as many gloves as a doctor's office because we wear gloves for everything, like cleaning ourselves, cleaning household things, cooking. Like we actually have gloves installed on the wall like they do at doctor's office. So that's how many gloves we use. There's one, a box installed right next to the toilet, and then there's a box in outside of the bathroom by the mirror, so you could get to them from either place in the bathroom. You're always never too far from a box of gloves. And in the kitchen, we have a box of gloves by the microwave to use for when we cook. I find rinsing vegetables in general stressful because I don't like the idea that I could get sick from them. Like, I always rinse them under like the scalding hot water. Blueberries change color. They've been rinsed so long for hot water. Yeah, we actually cook our food pretty much just by rinsing it. Uh, do you think that this, and I know he told me there are some other people now that they're working on other cases to try to get it approved as well. I mean, do you think this is something that will turn around and mental health will be, the insurance companies will be like, oh, we should do this for mental health issues? 
hopefully, I mean, it has actually helped us, and it's better than psychiatric medication because you get to f have feelings again, and like the working on my problems was actually a little more challenging than I thought it was going to be, and that took a huge emotional toll on me. Where is the the controller? There. I don't want to move my microphone. Oh, there. There's a battery pack on each side. You yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Does it bother you? No. Nope. Like, there's an adjustment period, but after it heals, it's okay. Yeah. And it, it looks kind of cool. you don't feel anything up here. Nah. You can actually feel where the leads are, but uh -huh. so it's yeah, not painful. Yeah, we travel up our neck, and then they go into the back of the head right here. And then we have caps. Little plastic-like horns right mm -hmm. here. here the first time in my life that I could actually look at my anxiety and be like, oh, wait a minute, this is actually a ridiculous thing to be doing, and I can stop being ridiculous now. What have the last 31 years been like for you? Oh, Good that question, is, right? It, it, is, it is a huge question. Um, I've done most of this as a single parent and working full time because as Amanda and Sarah have said, it's a very expensive, insidious disease. They really haven't had a life like you would typically see young girls, young women have a life. There was, there was, never, there was never a prom, there's never, um, there never activities like doing gymnastics or playing soccer. Having that experience and seeing that, there were times I wouldn't know, and having to go to work was really hard, but I had to. I absolutely had to, and I wouldn't know sometimes what I would come home to and what it would be like. Would they be, would they be so anxiety ridden that, you know, they were in, in the shower all day and honestly, Kyle, there were times where the water was running so much and the floor was so saturated, it would run through the second level down into the kitchen. I could, I could ramble off a list of 25 medications they've been on since they were probably 12 years old, 13 years old. They're off of all of their medications, which right there is, that's miraculous to me. They are the strongest, bravest people I know on the planet. And I see, even though they don't see a future for themselves right now because they take it one day at a time, I see a future for them that I never saw before, that I never even hoped they would have in my wildest dreams. But I do see that one day they will be able to live independently and one day they will be able to hold down to a job. I, it's funny, I hear so many people, oh, I can hardly wait till I can retire or I don't want to go to work today. Amanda and Sarah want to work. They want to contribute. They want to get into society. They want to do that. They want to be useful. And I see that they have that opportunity now. I've been blessed with wonderful, amazing daughters and I am, they've changed my life. They have, what they've gone through has made me a better and a different and more accepting person um, and it's made me and and maybe maybe the passion that we all have can be some advocacy for mental illness and maybe that's an, another direction